Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Good. We got goods, we got okays. Procrastinate. Our feet this one. <laughs> Let's call out Kathy. Kathy, just stand. Let's pray this morning, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace that you show upon us every single day. Father, we acknowledge the fact that it's in you that we live and move and have our being. So, Father God, we depend upon you and we're grateful for you. We ask that you bless the service this morning, Father God. Every song, that's, song that is sung, every word that is spoken, Father, let it give you glory and honor. And for those who are in this morning who are not feeling well, Father, we speak healing upon their lives and healing upon their hearts. We pray that you have your way in this service. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to have your way. In Jesus' name we all said, amen. amen. Let's uh, sing a song or two, shall we? Take a side. What do you turn into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome power, our God, our God. Water turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, none like you. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is Awesome and power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then you could ever stop us. And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What could stand against? What could stand against? What can stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our 
Glad to have everybody here this morning. Glad to be here this morning as well. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, there's a little blue card in the seat in front of you. We'd love to have you fill that information out, connect with us, and let us connect with you as well. If you have a prayer request, you just flip it on the back and write that prayer request on the back and let us join in agreement with you. And those cards will go out in the offering box out in the foyer. Speaking of offerings... As well, that box is for if you came prepared this morning to give your tithes or your offerings, you can put that in the box there as well. Or you can go on the GCC app and give there or go to the church's uh, website at gardner.church slash giving or you can mail it to the address on the screen. Also, good morning to all those online this morning. I don't know if my mom's watching or not, but good morning to everyone else who is joining us this morning. Let's pray over the offering, shall we? Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give back into your house, Father God. It is such an honor, Father God, to see what you do through this church, Father God, that is reaches in a global sense, Father. We thank you for that. 
honor that you've given this church. Father, this morning, those who may not be able to give, Father, we speak a special blessing over their lives as well. Father, that you would meet their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ, Christ Jesus, your son, so that, Father God, that they can give into your house and know the joy of giving to it, Father God. We speak a special, special blessing over this offering. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Let's stand up and do one more song, shall we? But I'm going to go over When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, the only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent, set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. In the sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. 
Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. And your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes for false witnesses. Rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord. so much, Renee. You did a fantastic job there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to be in God's house with you this morning, and a, a very good morning to our online church as well. It's fantastic to have you with us. I think it was a hobbit here before me, so it's going to raise us up a little bit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's pray, shall we? Lord, it's good to be in your house with your people, and we just I just pray a special blessing over this house this morning, over everybody that's here. I pray a special blessing over, the, over those who couldn't make it, and I pray a special blessing on those who are online with us this morning. Lord, may you bless your people. And Lord, as we come now to, to this, your, your, your word, this beautiful Psalm of David, Lord, we just ask for your help, for your blessing, for your insight, for your wisdom. We just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fall afresh on each of us this morning. Bless us, help us, we pray. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see. For we ask this in the strong, the beautiful, the majestic and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, about a week ago, uh, I got up in the middle of the night and, and I looked out the window and there before me was this, well, a little way away, was this large silhouette uh, in, in the dark. Now, to anybody who didn't know what that large silhouette was, it could be a little bit scary perhaps. But to me, it brought comfort. And, and why? Because it was none other than licorice, one of our alpacas. Now, licorice is very much the matriarch of, of our alpaca herd, very much so. She exerts her dominance wherever and whenever she can. But she's also, so we found out, she is also a guardian alpaca. We didn't know that when we got here. But uh, she, at night time, she was sitting in front of the alpaca corral, just guarding that alpaca corral. And as I found out uh, a few week, about a week ago, there she was in the, in the field as well, just scanning everywhere, just making sure everything was good and safe for the other alpacas. And then, of course, there was Rosie. Rosie, our beloved uh, Great Pyrenees, who uh, is a very oversized, lovable, chewing everything, large pup, right, who is still learning the word obedience and everything that goes with it, right? I've heard it said that when it comes to Great Pyrenees, if you get used to talking to a rock, that's your training for, for, for uh, training a Great Pyrenees pup. Anyway, Rosie is also a guardian. It's instinctive to her particular breed that she will be, she, and she already is growing into this uh, role. Her, her job in our household will be to guard the alpacas from coyotes or and worse cougars, bears in the future. That's her role in our household. Anyway, recently, another member of our family, this is Chester, I love this picture that Janine took of him. Another member wandered into the field, and Rosie just loves to play with anything and everything, including Chester, and just irritate Chester. Anyway, Chester started running away from, from Rosie, and of course, then, our, then Rosie thought this was a great game and began to chase after Chester. Well, that triggered licorice our alpaca she suddenly then saw chester as a threat and so here we have this alpaca and here we have rosie the dog chasing after this chester our cat who's practically trying to get out of the gate in time they're still learning to recognize what is a real threat and what is not but of course it's great to have these guardians on our homestead and you know we have a much greater guardian don't we we have our God, our Almighty One, the One who protects us from all kinds of ills, which often we may simply be blissfully unaware of. And of course, we are especially protected from our greatest enemy, who is whom? The evil one, right? Whether we realize it or not, right? He will do whatever he can to take us out. He will do whatever he can to cause us as much trouble as possible. We read the following in 1 Peter 5 and 8. 
Peter says here, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Jesus says this in John 8 and 44. He says, he, that is Satan, was a murderer from the beginning. And then in John 10 and 10, he says this as well. The thief, talking about the evil one here, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's what he wants to do with your life, just to steal from it in any way he can, to, to kill and to destroy anything and everything he can. We're also reminded of these words in Ephesians 6 and verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And so we see here that even when it seems like our struggle may be against human beings at large, right here we see there are greater powers of darkness at work orchestrating all of the evil and the conflicts that come our way, even when our conflict is with other human beings. And we see in our psalm this morning, this beautiful psalm, David is facing all kinds of conflict, right? Verse 2, he talks about the wicked advancing to devour him. It's very poetical, isn't it? You get this picture of, of the wicked coming against him with, with mouths open wide. Verse 3, he talks about an army besieging him. Verse 3, again, he talks about war breaking out against him. And some of this is hypothetical, but at the same time, David very much knew this kind of opposition with, with wars and battles waging against him. Verse 12 of our psalm, he talks about false witnesses rising up against him, spouting malicious accusations. He knew what it was to face all kinds of opposition, and many of his psalms talk to this end, right? That is with the different conflicts and oppositions that he faces as a king. But you know, even though this was the case, this was David's reality, at the same time, David had learned, for the most part at least, not to fear why? Because he leaned on his protector. He leaned on the almighty God. And we see this especially in the psalm this morning. Verse 1 again, he says here, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. I just love his faith here, right? He's saying, I'm not going to stumble, I'm not going to fall, but it's the enemies who are going to stumble and fall. Verse 3, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Right? He's got this firm faith. And where is that faith? I should say, whom is that faith in? Verse 5, for in the day of trouble, he, the Lord Almighty, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent. And set me high upon a rock. Right? That is where David's confidence was. And as we look to these words that David pens here, we see a few things about God's protection, don't we? Firstly, we see number one, verse one God is our light, God is our salvation. Right? God is the one who lights the path ahead of us. God is the one who makes that path straight so that we don't stumble and fall when we're looking to Him, when we're following His light. And of course, God is our salvation. He saves us from our sins, but He saves us from so much more. Sometimes we're not even aware of what He is saving us from. He is our stronghold. We see that in verse 1 as well. Now, a stronghold was a fortified place or a fortress, a place that could not be moved. It was a place of survival. It was a place of refuge. Number 3, in verse 2, God will ensure that it's not us, David says, but it's the enemy who will stumble and fall. That's when we're looking to God, of course. Number four, he will keep us safe in his dwelling. We see that in verse five. And also in verse five, he will set us high upon a rock. Now, what is so special about being set up high upon a rock? It's a place of victory. It's a place of exaltation. And it's a place where the enemy cannot get to you. Right? The enemy can look up at you, gnashing their teeth perhaps. You can look down to, at them, but the enemy cannot get to you. It reminds me of what David says in Psalm 23, that beloved Psalm in verse five. He says, you prepare a table before me where? In the presence of my enemies. He's not just necessarily getting rid of the enemy here. Sometimes the enemy just doesn't disappear like you would want the enemy to. Right? But he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. There is abundance. My cup overflows. You know, in that place of persecution and evil and opposition, 
It's very easy to get discouraged. It's very easy to get despondent. It's very easy in that place to want to give up or even to blame God. But what's David telling us? May we instead look with gratitude to that table of God's goodness and God's abundance that He has set in place for us. I believe it starts with gratitude and thanksgiving for the things He has already put in our, in our lives. But you have set a table, a table of your abundance, a table of your goodness in the presence of my enemies. They can just look on. And here, notice he says his cup overflows. It's not about, about debating whether my cup is half empty or half full. If you're in the Lord, your cup overflows. My cup runneth over, right? This is our God. This is what he does for us. Paul puts it this way if we go to Romans chapter 8. I encourage you this week to meditate on Romans chapter 8. It's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of scripture. But here, as Paul says, Romans 8, verse 31, If God is for us, who can be against us? We sung that earlier, right? We didn't even talk about that, that and, and yet, yet you had us singing that. That's fantastic. <clears throat> if God is for us, who can be against us? Further on in this passage, verse 35, Paul says this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword... Verse 37, no, he says, in all things we are what? We are more than conquerors. We're not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Right? And through whom? Through him who loved us. Paul says, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Not even the darkest powers that are out there can separate you from God and from His love. God loves us so much that He protects us from the enemy. In a bit, we're going to sing that classic hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Anybody know that? I think it was written by Martin Luther. A Mighty Fortress is Our God, a bulwark. I like that word, bulwark. Like the strong, solid fortress. Bulwark. A bulwark never... Did some... I said bulwark. Bulwark. Sorry, you've got a Kiwi kind of a South African kind of American thing, accent thing going on here. <laughs> but a bulwark never failing. Right? But then in verse 2 of that hymn, it refers to Jesus as Lord Sabaoth or Sabaoth. Anybody know what that means? Last week we had Jehovah or Yahweh Nisi. Anyone, anyone remember what that means? The Lord is my banner. Under Him, we have the victory. Under His banner. This week, we have Lord Sabaoth, which means Lord of hosts, or God of angel armies. And we see this idea in various scriptures. I want to go back to David when he's fighting Goliath. Can you imagine this tiny, scrawny little kid? And then you've got this ogre of a giant. I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds? Well, here we're going to get to what his success is. Verse Samuel 17, verse 45. Uh, this is what he says as he looks up. You can imagine him looking up to this ogre of a giant. He says to Goliath, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of whom? The Lord of hosts. Right? He is the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This is how the New Living Translation puts it. You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. In case we're not sure what that term, Lord of hosts, means, it means the Lord of, of heaven's armies or angel armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Oh, I want you to think about the magnitude of what David is saying there. This scrawny little kid, and yet he already knows about God's angel armies. <laughs> Can you think about the magnitude? How many angels that, at the moment, our, our small group with us last week, we went through the topic of angels together. We looked at God's heavenly angels and the fallen angels, which is demons. And so some of this material might be a little bit familiar to you guys. But, uh, and, and try to get your head around how many angels, how many angel armies God really has that are at our disposal. This is what John says in Revelation 5 and 11. He speaks about many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. I don't know who's a mathematician in here who can work out the math of that, but whew, it's a lot. Right? We're in the millions. 
And yet all these angel armies, these heavenly hosts, are at your disposal and mine, at your service and mine. Dr. Jeffries in, in our course calls them God's triple A service, always available to assist, right? It's God's triple A service for you and for me. And we see this in Hebrews 1 verse 14. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve whom? Those who will inherit salvation. So if you are here in this house this morning inheriting the salvation of God, those angels are sent from God to serve you. Think about that. Just think how incredible, how amazing that is, how profound that is that God would, would, would send his millions of angels at any given moment according to his will to serve you and to serve me. And that includes your protection and mine, physical protection, spiritual protection. When it comes to children, for example, Jesus says this, Matthew 18 and 10, See that you do not despise any of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Do you know your kids, your grandkids have angels looking after them? Oh. This is what we read in Psalm 91, 11 and 12. For he would command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in the hand so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. We've seen a wonderful example of the Lord of hosts, angel armies in 2 Kings chapter 6. And there the, the city of Israel is surrounded by this, this, this foreign army. And Elisha's servant, he looks out. And he is freaking out. He's really freaking out. Right? This is what he says in verse 15, 2 Kings 6 and 15. He says to Elisha, Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? Ever been in that place before? Oh no, the opposition, the enemy is so profound. What shall I do? What are your choices? You might want to fight. You might want to freeze. You might want to flee. Right? The three F's. What is your response when you are surrounded by trouble and evil and persecution? Are you the first F to fight? Are you the second to freeze? Or are you the third F to flee? Try and get out of there as soon as you can. Or maybe a combination of those. Well, here Elijah's pretty chill. It's kind of like he's saying, don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be alright. Or maybe every big thing in this case is going to be alright. That's my paraphrase. This is what he really says, verse 16. He says, don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Can you imagine that? Open his eyes so that he may see. That's my prayer for myself. It's my prayer for all of us. That the Lord would open our eyes to see what he wants us to see. <coughs> right? Including when we find ourselves in trouble, that we would see those heavenly things the Lord wants of us. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Can you imagine these angel armies all around? And just the confidence, the change in Elisha's servants from that point on. Now, we might think, well, this kind of thing only happened in biblical times. It's not something that, that would ever happen now, right? But I've read and heard many testimonies of missionaries and just ordinary everyday people where God has accompanied them with one or two or more or even legions of angels. I was reading a story. This was written by uh, Billy Graham. He, he's got a book called Angels. And, and there he talks about a family called the Payton family, a missionary family in the New Hebrides Islands in the South Pacific. And they, there they were with this tribe, and the tribe became very hostile towards them and threatened their lives. So much so that one night, uh, John Payton, this, this missionary pastor and his wife, they got down on their knees, and all night they prayed to God for his protection because they were worried that their mission station was going to be burned down and that they themselves were going to be killed. When they woke up in the morning, they were astonished as they looked out because the tribe was no longer there. And they wondered, we had the tribe gone. What had happened to them? Well, about a year later, something more astonishing happened. The chief of that tribe, the chief who had threatened them, he came to them and he had become a born-again Christian. 
And so at this point, they were curious, and they asked him, well, what happened that particular night? Where did y'all go? You had plenty of y'all this week, didn't you? Right, where did y'all go? I can't do the Tennessee thing kind of justice anyway. Right, what happened to your tribe? Where did you go? What happened? And the chief explained that they had seen an army of giant men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands surrounding the mission grounds. God has sent his angel armies to keep the missionaries safe. How true it is what the psalmist says in Psalm 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Think about that whenever you are scared, whenever you are afraid, whenever you are worried about somebody coming to harass you or, 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 or worse, to cause you harm. Sometimes I get afraid, I've got to say. Do I hear a noise in the night? And I say, Lord, you are God. Your word says the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Would you encamp yourself around our property right now? Would you encamp yourself around our home? Would you encamp yourself around my wife and my daughter? Would you encamp yourself even around those alpacas? Right? Because God cares for his little critters as well. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. We have no need to fear anything because our God, our protector, the Lord of hosts, the God of angel armies is on your side and mine. Well, how do we respond when we know that God is for us and not against us? How do we respond when we know that our almighty God is our protector? Let's take a look at how David responds. This is what he says in verse 4. He says, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. Last week we were talking about desires of the heart, right? Godly desires and perhaps less than godly desires, right? If you had one desire that you could ask of God, what would it be? Would it be some, for some material blessing? Would it be for some health blessing? Would it be? What would it be? This is David's. He desires to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. He desires to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. He desires to seek him in his temple. There's three desires, David, not one. Right? <laughs> Verse 6, he says he will come sacrificing with shouts of joy. Verse 6 again, he will also sing and make music to the Lord. Verse 8, his heart would seek the face of God. Verse 11, he seeks the guidance of God. And here he says this in verse 11, Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me straight path. It's a good prayer, isn't it? Teach me, Lord. We're told the sage in Proverbs says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, right? 5 and 6. Here the psalmist says, teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path. Whenever the Lord is teaching us, whenever we're going on His path, we're going to be just fine doesn't mean you're not going to get trouble. You're going to always have trouble, as Jesus said, in this world. But you're still going to be just fine. Because God is with you. And then if we go to verse 13, David's response continues. He says, I would trust in God with confidence. Right? This confidence, David would see God's goodness. Then verse 14, he is content to wait for the Lord. God's will, God's way, God's timing. And as we go into this week, maybe today, maybe into the week to come, and as we consider our almighty God who is for us and not against us, and as we consider his great protection for us, what might be our response? If you have the handout, if you take a look down the bottom, there's a bunch of little check boxes. And I've summarized up David's responses in this psalm. And maybe, just maybe consider one or two or, or five of those responses this week. Perhaps that our desire would truly be for God before anything else. Right, as we saw last week with David saying that God was his exceeding joy. And where God's not our desire, where God's not our exceeding joy, we don't beat ourselves up in guilt or shame. We simply ask, Lord, you are not right now my one desire. Would you become that? Would you become that? That you would be number one, that you would mean everything to me, that you would be my exceeding joy. 
Perhaps that we would come before him with worship, thanksgiving, gratitude, <coughs> joyful for his protection. Perhaps that we would be singing, making music to the Lord. Perhaps that we would seek God's face more and further his guidance. Perhaps our response is to quietly trust in the Lord for his goodness. And while we trust, to take heart and to wait patiently. It can be hard to wait, can't it? It can be hard to trust. Who understands the ways of God, and especially so when trouble is on our doorstep, whenever you are feeling the effects of, of any, any given enemy. This past week I was reading a story about a Marine during World War II. Somehow he had been separated from his unit on a Pacific island and the fighting had become intense and the smoke and crossfire. He just lost touch with all of his comrades. And there alone in the jungle he could hear the enemy approaching. And he looked to where he could scramble to, to hide. And he saw these series of small caves and he ran to one of them to hide inside. The problem was he could still hear the enemy soldiers approaching and he realized that they would search all of these caves and they would eventually kill him. And so he prays. He prayed, Lord, if it be your will, please protect me. Whatever your will, though, I love you and trust you. Amen. Well, after praying, he heard the enemy getting even closer and he thought to himself, well, I guess the Lord is not going to help me out of this one. But as he watched, as he saw the enemy approaching, searching for him, the spider layered strand after strand after strand at the entrance of the cave where he was hiding. And he thought to himself, ha, huh, well, I guess the Lord isn't going to help me. What I need is a brick wall, and what the Lord has sent me is a spider web. Well, the enemy drew closer, and he watched from the darkness of his hideout, and he could see them searching one cave after the other. And as they came towards his one, he got ready to make his last stand. But as they came towards his one, and they looked at his cave, they just turned away. What's going on? And then it dawned on him. Then he realized that with the spider web over the entrance of his cave, the cave looked as if no one had entered that cave for a while. And completely humbled, he prayed to God and he said, Lord, forgive me. I had forgotten that in you, a spider's web is stronger than a brick wall. God works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? But know how much he loves you. And friends, know that even when life does not make sense, know that God is still in control. And know that God is in control of your circumstances. Let me finish off with the final words of the psalmist from verse 13. Here David says this. He says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14, he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And in case you missed the first wait, he says it again. And wait. Be strong. In New Zealand, when I was at high school, our school motto was Kia Kaha, which in New Zealand Maori means ever be strong. Wait for the Lord, Kia Kaha. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing this hymn together. A mighty fortress is our God.
Prime Minister, today is Art uh, Forbes. He's going to be up here at the front, and he'll be more than happy to pray for uh, any needs that you might have. GCC Crafts is starting up again in August. Is that right, Becky? Good. Uh, so the first Sunday, the first Tuesday, I should say, is the sixth. Is that when you guys are going to be back? Uh, Ten thirty. So the, the more, the merrier, right, ladies? You're very welcome. Even guys, if you want to do crafts, it's, uh, you're welcome as well. Uh, Miss Beacon, I'm in. Uh, men's breakfast, it won't be this week. Usually it's the first Thursday of the month, but it's going to be the second Thursday, that is August the 8th. And just a promo for what's coming up at the end of the month, and that is our beach service and picnic. That's going to be at the Gardner Beach, Sunday, August the 25th. And just a reminder, it's 11 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. If you put, turn up at 10 o'clock, you'll be put to work. Right? Uh, so that's not a bad thing either. But that's something to look forward to. There's going to be more information to come for that. But just mark your calendars. Make sure that you can be with us for that. And invite your family, invite your friends. We'd love to have them as well. Well, now let us now bow to, for the benediction, which is taken today from the book of Jude, verses 1 and 2. To those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and kept safe for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>